So you're interested in making a bow shave. Well, I have the video just for you. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today we're gonna to make a boche. I'm gonna walk you through the process if you've never made one before. It is a mead, uh, a style of mead that has caramelized or burnt honey um, as its main uh, fermentable sugar. So basically what we're gonna do is heat up a bunch of honey in a pot and um, it changes color, it changes some of the, the characteristics of the honey too. It's a very interesting and awesome style of mead. And uh, we're gonna be, of course, making that today. And I'll walk you through the process. Hopefully um, this, I, this video will be beginning to end of making a boche. So I'm excited for that. Here's what you need to make a boche, really to make any mead in general. So we start with your ingredients. I have here a bunch of mesquite honey from um, Dutch Gold. So this is my base honey that I'll be using. Um, you are also gonna need a bunch of water. So I have four gallons of water. In a moment, I'll tell you the recipe for this. Um, and then I I'm going to be using the Lalvin D47 yeast as alongside, of course, all the other things I need. So I have uh, star sand water, which is basically a sanitizer. Super important. I spray down everything before I use it um, to keep any bad bacteria out. I also have a hydrometer, which measures gravity. We will talk about that, how to do that. I have a graduated cylinder for helping me measure gravity because it goes in there, allows it to float. The mixing process, I have a degassing wand that I use with a drill, and of course that stirs things up. We are going to need to uh, you know, heat up the honey, a big pot. Now here's the thing about this, and I had to learn from trial and error, you need a, a larger pot than what you're gonna be um, using. So if you're making, let's say you put a gallon of honey in, which is 12 pounds, uh, you do not wanna do this in a one gallon pot because the honey boils up and bubbles up a lot. So get a big, big pot so that you only use up a portion of your you know, area in there so it has room to bubble. This is my fermenter for today. This is the Catalyst Fermentation System from craft -a brew Go check them out. This thing's awesome, um, and I'm excited to use it for this project. So, <coughs> excuse me, let's get started. I'll go and walk you through the, uh, the, the ingredients. I am making a five gallon boche, just normal boche. So uh, they're all right here. I'm gonna be using basically uh, four gallons of water, around uh, 15 or about 15 pounds of honey. Now here's, there's a breakdown of that, of that honey. I am going to use about, uh, my, no, I'm sorry, not 15 pounds. I need 12, 12 pounds of honey, math. Um, 12 pounds of honey, eight of that is going to be bochet, meaning caramelized or burnt some, so that changes the character of it. I'm also using um, about four pounds of regular, just the mesquite honey that has not been bochet, because I wanna help retain the flavor of the honey and kinda of get best of both worlds. This is after a lot of trial and error, I found that this um, system works best. So we're gonna be doing that. We of course are gonna be using the Lavin D47 yeast, and that's it, other than of course the equipment. So. Let's get started, super simple. Um, if you've never made one before, step one, ingredients and equipment. Step two, we're gonna pour um, all of our honey in. Oh, also I forgot, I need my scale. You will need a scale too, so give me a moment. Okay, I've got a scale here. It's got the, it's a very wide scale so that I can put basically any, anything on it. We're going to go ahead and weigh out the pot and everything, so I will, uh, all right, so this right here, this pot weighs 2.9 pounds. Um, and like I said, we want eight pounds of honey just so they're gonna boche. So I'm gonna tear that out. So now we're at zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring honey in. All right, I went over a little bit, 8.3. That's okay. Um, I knew that I wasn't gonna be perfect. So now we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna go put him on the stove to uh, start to boil and start to heat up. All right, so we have our, our um, honey on here. It's all in there. And like I said, the big thing is, there's a lot of room at the bottom and that's good because this is gonna boil up some. So what's gonna happen here, I have set it on high, well, I'm gonna set it on about medium and we are gonna heat this up. Now in the heating process, you wanna get it up to heat, up to boiling temperature 
And then you want to kind of let it not, I mean, it's going to boil, but you don't want it to be set on high. So I normally set mine, once it gets going, on about four, so about 40% um, power. And I'll show you that here in a second. But let me get it up to heat first, and then we'll go from there. All right, you see we're at a boil and we're starting to get going. And this is what I mean. You really have to watch out for the overboil. So I have turned my heat down, I got it to the boil. I've turned it down to 50%, which is a general area where it won't boil too much. Um, and I just turned it down so the, the burner's still pretty hot. But you see how this is rising up? If I had a really small container, this thing would have foamed up and came out of the top. But because I have a bigger container, it's not going to do that. So if I can get it to a manageable spot where it is like this, that's great. One thing I learned while making lots of bochets that is that if you stir it a bunch, like right now, if I stir this a bunch, it causes it to foam up even more, not defoam. So just know that when you stir, it foams up. So find it, find a controllable temperature range. Just let it set at. I'm going to leave it at 40%. Um, and what I've done here, I'll also show you this. I always, uh, I'll start a timer for 15 minutes because what I do here is I will um, get a gauge of the color skew, like wheel as it goes along. So this is zero minutes at the start, of course 15, and I think I'll make it all the way to an hour and 45, depending, I don't know, I just went that far. So this is the beginning color that we have here, as you can see, and we will see how it is in 15 minutes. And um, after this, I'm just gonna show you the different colors at each time. But this is gonna start changing character. The sugars start to break down some. That's what happens with a boche is um, certain sugars at the higher um, at temperatures will actually break down and um, caramelize. So not all sugars though, because the, each honey is made up of multiple different kinds of sugars. So you're continuing to keep some, you're caramelizing others. And that's what gives it the boche flavor. I can tell you right now, it smells incredible as already, and I'm excited. So uh, here are the updates all the way until I think I'm ready to pull it off. All right, so here's the color wheel. And I, I didn't really show the boiling process because it was pretty lame, to be honest with you. Um, but basically, I just let it go. And at that 40% um, power, and so this is an hour and 15 minutes of boiling time. There's some recipes that are older that have you go basically like till it's black. And I haven't ever done that. I don't really know if I want to do that. So uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to take and put some water into my vessel that I'm going to be fermenting in down here. And I, I do want to encourage you and tell you something. Whenever you are, are, like this is what we have here. This is all the honey. Whenever you are uh, transferring the honey over, you have a couple options. You can choose to, uh, some people scoop off the foam and have, you know, they've had good results that way, which, you know, of course there's foam on top. And uh, honestly, I've never done that. I've always just left the foam and poured everything straight into a container. Uh, and that's just up to you. Uh, I've been fine without scooping it off. I did lose a little honey in the process because boiling, boiling water, you lose water, evaporates, all that stuff. So there's a likelihood that uh, my eight pounds is down to like seven pounds because of that, but that's fine. Uh, what you don't want to do is you do not want to take from here, you do not want to take water, especially room temp water, and pour it straight into the boiling honey because it will foam up and shoot out and it'll be like a volcano. So what we're going to do um, before this cools down too much, we're just going to add water into our vessel that we're going to be fermenting in. And you don't have to ferment in a, a plastic or, you know, this vessel, you could always ferment in something um, like a glass or, or whatever you really want to do. Um, you don't have to use plastic. I'm going to close that butterfly valve. So I'm going to pour my water in. This is going to help me keep the honey from, because uh, it's very hot, from burning the sides. We're going to do all four gallons and then we will add our um, regular honey to the mix. So let me add this water and then I'm going to pour the honey straight in and then um, we'll go from there. So the 
honey is in here and you can see there's that foam on top. Again, I don't think it's a huge deal. Um, now I want to go ahead and stir this. I'm gonna move it back into my brewing room so that I can go ahead and continue on. All right, so I moved it into here. I still have a little bit of water um, and there's a reason for that. I have, actually I left it in the other room. All right, so we've mixed everything up and um, can, here's why I go for this color. This is an example of one of my bouches. This is the okay boche. You can see that it is pretty dark and there's a, there's a reason for that, partially because of the boche, the coloring of the honey that I used and the amount of caramelization, but also because I put a little bit of chocolate in there. So there it has some extra darkness, but this is a great color for what I want for my boche. And um, like the, you know, the wheel that we talked about here, this thing is, uh, you can use it as a reference to know how much bocheting you've done. So uh, we're ready to pitch some yeast. So uh, there are a couple ways you can do this. You can either rehydrate them, which works. Um, you can also uh, just dump them in, sprinkle them in, which is what I'm gonna do here. Uh, one factor to know about uh, making a boche is that as you uh, caramelize honeys, it takes away nutrients. So what I'm gonna to have to be doing after I just basically, uh, I put the yeast right on top, I needed to provide the yeast with some uh, nutrient and energizer to help them ferment because they've lost a little bit of that with the honey. So this is Fermax, which is a um, yeast nutrient. And I'm gonna use a teaspoon. So this is one teaspoon per gallon. So we're gonna go for four. I'm using for reference, I know some people are mad because I'm using a tablespoon. I'm using half of this tablespoon. And there's multiple ways you can do this, by the way. You can either, um, you can choose to do this in, in the way I'm doing, which is basically just throwing it all in at once. Or you can do staggered nutrient schedule, which means that, A, staggered nutrient schedule, which means you are taking all of this that I'm putting in now and putting it in over four periods, day zero, two, four, six. And both of the methods work well. Honestly, the uh, staggered, it only takes more work because uh, you have to actually make sure and watch it. So I, not that I'm being lazy here, I just, I wanna do this. I wanna make sure the yeast have a good start. Um, so five grams of yeast of Lavin D47 is plenty for this, uh, for four gallons. It will get me up to, that five grams gets you up to about five to six gallons. So um, now the next step, this thing is clean, so I'm just gonna stir a little bit. We have caramelized our honey. We have um, added the regular honey into this, mixed it all up. And then the final step for now, and again, this is the full video. This is everything from beginning to end uh, of this mead. We're just gonna put the lid on top and I will give you some updates. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. I forgot something. We need to take a gravity reading. So. Um, here's what I'm gonna do. I have moved a little bit of sample of this into this container and we're going to figure out how high the gravity is of this mead. And um, I'm gonna use a hydrometer, which I have right here. And of course, I'm just gonna put it straight in and we're gonna find out. And this is pretty, I mean, it's not too hot, so it's not, I'm not too worried about that. We're sitting at a pretty heavy, hefty mead. Um, around a 15% mead, which means we're roughly 1.1075, 1.1075. So not quite 75, sorry, 1.175, which means that it is uh, almost 1.12. So that's a hefty mead, 14 or 15%. The good news is that D47 goes up to 14%. We will have a little residual sweetness because um, there's that 1% uh, or 0 0.1, 1.0. One of gravity that is uh, going to provide some sweetness, which is nice for a um, boche. What I'd like. Another thing I want to note, and I think I've said it earlier. I don't know if I did or not. Uh, a light boche, like a seven percent boche, you know, seven to nine percent boche is kind of weak in my opinion. Um, it has so much body and character that it needs that that you know alcohol, alcohol content to support it. So um, I again. Back to what I was saying, I had to cut in and then make sure I fixed this. We are um, like 16 hours in and we're fermenting. You can kind of see here, maybe. 
um, there is a little activity going on up above. And of course, in the airlock, we've got stuff happening too. So this thing is rocking and rolling. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let it set for a little while and then we'll, uh, we'll see what happens from there. Okay, so this thing, we're on day four um, and it is still fermenting. I'll try to get the camera close. It's kind of hard to see. There's definitely some, a lot of stuff floating around in there. And the top of it is obviously still going. Um, you can see the bottom here. We've got a little bit of sediment um, building up, but nothing too crazy. So we're going to let it continue to go. And then I'm thinking it'll be done probably within the week. But we'll find out. All right, you guys, here's a, um, a little Boche update. So this thing has been going for a while, done a couple videos, told you what's happening with it. I'm ready to go ahead and move it into a new container. So you can see right here that most of the stuff is settled at the bottom. I'm going to take here in a moment and uh, pull this little thing off. Of course, and my glass carboy, stick this sucker right on here. Okay, so we're not done with this video yet, but here's what I'm gonna show you. The um, mead is basically almost done. You can kind of see here, I'll show you. This is my empty vessel, of course, and um, I have my carboys here. This is a three gallon glass carboy. This is a one gallon glass carboy, and they are both full. Um, four gallons of total mead from our complete recipe. So uh, our next step, I'm gonna take a quick uh, tasting. I'm gonna taste it real fast to tell you kind of what I'm getting. And um, I'm excited for this. So let's go ahead and taste it. Now I did get a little, um, I got kind of the last end of the um, racking. So that's got a little yeasty tasting because that's kind of where some of the yeast came in. Um, definitely has some whiskey notes, some caramel notes. It has a, um, a uh, pretty smooth finish already. And I think that that will, of course, cha not change, but continue to better over time, get better. Uh, it will become smoother as it ages, which is really good. Yeah, I'm really excited. That thing is so good. It's got some sweetness too, because there's some of the sugars that were not totally fermented upon. And so um, I'm excited for that. Now, I am going to, my next step is going to be to take and leave these things to age for a little while. Um, the thing with the Boche, it needs some age. Um, ultimately, I will not let this thing, like the video will end before I bottle all of it, but I'm going to at least let it set for maybe a month or two more. Um, and then I will uh, bottle it. But I really like aging my stuff for a long time, for six months plus, especially on Boches. They just get better with time, with age, better with age. Yeah. So uh, I've gone and gone ahead and put them in glass fermenters, which is really important that you age things in glass fermenters because they don't have any... Um, plasticky taste. Of course, that's what happens when you do use plastic, but they just are best for aging. So, aging in glass. I'm going to put them away, and uh, I'll be back soon with some more updates and some tasting. Again, this is the beginning of a Voche to the very end, so I hope you're, enjo you're enjoying it. Make sure you leave a like and a comment if you like this, and don't forget to subscribe. So, see you in a bit. Okay, here we are, the grand finale of this Voche. So, we started at the beginning of this video, making it, of course, and, and caramelizing the honey, doing all those various things. Um, we let it age for a while, and now we're at the point where we want to go ahead and bottle it. Now, I want to say this. I do have four total gallons of this. I'm only going to bottle one gallon today. Uh, the other three, I'm going to continue to let age. But for the sake of this video, uh, I am going to go ahead and bottle uh, this one gallon. Can you uh, bulk age your Boche longer? Yeah, of course. However, in this case, I just want to go ahead and bottle it. This is a about 75 day old mead. So it is. it went through all the fermentation and then of course it's aged and done all that stuff. Um, I'm going to get a taste test here and I'm going to tell you what it kind of, how it's changed over the past 75 days. And then we're going to bottle it. Okay, let's have a taste test of it. You can see the color on it. The uh, actual one gallon is way darker, but this is a really nice, rich, like, I mean, caramel color, uh, amber-esque, in my opinion. Yeah, that's um, that's really good. It's got fruity notes. Um, one thing I've noticed in my Boches that I've made is they all have this kind of uh, whiskey-esque note, but also a little bit of fruit. Like, I almost get a raspberry, kind of a berry-esque 
taste to it. It's very smooth. It's very, I mean, it's pretty clear too. Um, yeah, this, this is going to be so much better with age because the, uh, the flavors will begin to meld and will begin to um, mellow out, which is really, really nice. I'm a huge fan of this. If you haven't made one, go make a boche. Um, well, let me talk about the bottling process. If you've never done this before, I have sanitized everything in my red bucket here. I have a bunch of sanitized water um, and I have been, I've soaked all my stuff in it. So I'm using a racking cane um, or excuse me, an auto siphon, which is this thing, and then a racking tube and a bottling wand. And I am going to be bottling into a couple wine bottles because of space reasons for me. Um, and then a few beer bottles sized. I'm using synthetic corks. And I am also using um, just, you know, crown caps for the, the, uh, the wine bottles. Uh, I will be using my floor corker, corker for uh, corking everything and the uh, bench capper for capping everything. So it's real simple. You put your auto siphon into the container. I always elevate my liquid because it makes it easier to rack. I'm gonna get this first bottle lower so it flows better. Yep. And then we basically just finish and fill every single bottle. So I'm gonna fill every single one. I'm gonna go ahead and cork them and cap them and then we will talk about the kind of what happens at this point um, with the mead. Okay, so we finished capping and corking everything. Um, I ended up with about, I did three wine bottles and two beer bottles, excuse me, three beer bottles and a, uh, was it 387 milliliter, um, basically wine bottle as well. So I am going to be letting those continue to age and I will put my labels onto them, which they kind of look like this. I can give you a kind of a close. They are, they have all the information they need on them. I know you can't really see them. Maybe I'll flash a picture on the screen, but I have labels that I use. If you are finishing your mead, you can put a little temporary labels if you want. You can make your own in various uh, capacities and uh, I would highly recommend doing that for your own sake. So now the next step is gonna be to clean everything up and take care of all that. I'll put the bottles away. Um, the other three gallons is going to sit and age and then I will bottle it in the future and um, maybe I'll do a comparative taste test to show you if there's a difference between the bulk aging and the bottle aging of that. One thing I do wanna mention that's really important, when you finish a mead, you generally want to take a gravity reading. And uh, I did do that, I didn't do it on camera. Um, the gravity when it ended after the primary was 1.01. .01. We started at about 1.13, um, about 1.125 I think is what it was. Um, and that left us with the possibility of about 15% uh, ABV. And we got down to 1.01. .01. It was the same thing when I, I measured it not too long ago. And um, that means that there's resi residual sweetness from the Boche, uh, Boche de honey, and that's just normal. So that was the end gra ending gravity. It's sitting at about a 14, 13.7% um, mead currently, uh, ABV mead and yeah, really good. I'm excited. If you've never made one of these before, follow these steps and try it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. This video took about, you know, two and a half months, three months-ish um, to make because of the process. But I wanted to make sure you got to see a boche from the beginning to the end. If you would like to support the channel, um, the best thing you can do is go and hit like and subscribe. Um, if you will subscribe, you'll see my content in the future. I put out a lot of videos of me making meads, but also testing theories, um, trying weird different meads, mead reviews. I have a podcast. All of this stuff um, is all mead related content. So if you want to see more of that, and I will be putting out more of that in the future. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you'll go check out some other ones. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about equipment, um, ingredients, anything like that, go look in the description. I have it all there. Thank you. Have a great day. Cheers.